yeah, brother, here on the Please Me Fall YouTube channel. Month of Freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to you today with a off pace video for the Month of Freedom, but this is a video that I wanted to put out at one point during this month, and I've gotten myself all the way to the second to last day of the month of freedom. It is now May 30th. I wanted to end off the month of freedom with a bang, so tomorrow's video is sick, but I had to squeeze this in for today. And normally this would probably be a second channel type video, but I figured I'd throw it on the main channel because I wanted to talk about a couple things while I've got everyone's attention. And it's been an insane month. I wanna thank you guys so much for being a part of the month of freedom. and. Uh, I'd say the content has just been top notch. We've had so much fun. Today I'm gonna to talk about a couple stories that uh, pertain to my personal life and how things have changed over the last couple of years. Some of you who have been around for a long time have probably kind of heard about a couple of things changing, but I've never really talked about these subjects and how they've uh, come to be. And right now we're gonna dig into them because I just received a letter that is my official withdrawal from law school. I know that might be a surprise to some of you. So I'm gonna start off by telling a story uh, just about how we've gotten to the point where we are and how this letter has really certified in the fact that uh, we're in this for the long run, boys, here on the YouTube channel. So we're gonna rewind all the way back to when I was 15 years old and I was driving down the streets of Omaha, Nebraska. A guy by the name of Chase, a now very close friend of mine, pulled up next to me and invited me to a car meet. And at the time I just had my permit, you know, I could go back to school and work. And I went to that car meet and that's how I met 1320 Video and Kyle from 1320 Video. And that's the short version of it. So I left the car meet that day and I was like, man, this is so freaking cool. You know, they've got this killer YouTube channel. They've got these really great social media platforms. I've got to be a part of this. So I hit up Kyle, I said, how can I join your team? And uh, this is kind of when Instagram came out and Kyle pretty much gave me the reins of their Instagram, which then grew into operating the entire social media platform for 1320 video, which was the Facebook page, which we grew up to about 4 million followers. The Instagram, we grew up to about a million followers. And then I did uh, social media relations with other companies that we collaborated with. And I did this all the way through my undergraduate college, which was at uh, University of Tampa. So I worked for Kyle in high school, and then I went to college. So I would fly from school in Tampa out to races like Rocky Mountain Race Week, which plays a big factor in this story and uh, you know other races like streetcar takeover things like that all while operating their social media and you know i would even announce at some of these events so streetcar takeover would pay me to announce during the racing things like that pretty much anything i could get my hands on if i had enough time to do it i would do it outside of school which working for 1320 video is the best job ever in school because i could do everything from my phone and laptop and even in class i would be constantly posting we would post every hour on the hour on the Facebook page from about 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And so, you know, scheduling all that posts and stuff was really fun. And then I actually hired Cooper during college to operate the Instagram because that became a job in and of its own. I mean, we were a freaking powerhouse of social media and it was really fun. So that brings me to my next point. I flew out to a race. We go out to Rocky Mountain Race Week in Colorado, which you guys saw us in last year. And totally on a whim, Kyle and I filmed this just hilarious video in the parking lot. We had been up for like 16 hours filming all day at the races. And I filmed this video in front of Tom Bailey's Camaro. You know, little did I know this was going to be the video that made Cletus McFarland what it is today because that's the first video we ever had put out. And what had really happened is we made the video, which you guys can look up the video for yourself. It's titled 3000 Horsepower Camaro, Cleus McFarland. We made the video and I was like, oh, it's pretty funny. But I had always kind of made funny videos and Kyle's like, no, this one's hilarious. So Kyle stays up, edits the video. I go to sleep because I'm tired. 
Kyle posts the video at like 2 or 3 a.m. I wake up at 8. My phone's blowing up. And the video had, I think, already reached a million views by that point. And I'm just like, holy crap, you know, like this is so crazy. I didn't really know what to do with it at first. So I just made more Facebook videos and stuff like that as the uh, months went on to try and keep the Cletus McFarland uh, videos thing growing. But I didn't know really whether to monetize it or anything like that. And I went back to school and just focused on school. Got through that, graduated. I was like, man, like, where, what am I going to do? Like, what's my point in life right here, you know? And I just, I honestly didn't know what I was going to do. I was at a point where I loved my job at 1320 Video so much, but I've always had this desire to have my own thing, you know? And I didn't know if that was just my own business or if that was my own restaurant, you know, but I always wanted to go out and start something of my own. And I was at this point where I just didn't know what to do. And the, the easiest option seemed to be to stay in school. So I said, you know what, I'm going to apply for law school. So I applied for law school. I took out a student loan, started paying for law school and off I went. And looking back on it, you know, I have no regret at all in going to law school, but it definitely cost me money that I wouldn't have had to spend if I would have probably taken my videos more seriously from the beginning. But basically a month or two into law school, I decided I'm going to start posting on the Cletus McFarlane YouTube channel. And I got with Cooper, which we, we all still are operating the 1320 video social media at this point. And I was like, dude, meet me at the house after class. Like, let's start filming some videos. So we started filming the C7 videos, you know, exhaust whistles. Those were our, those were our big videos. And I remember, you know, but that's down the line. I remember our first couple of videos were like on our, I don't know, 10th video or so. And I woke up and our video had 5,000 views. And I was like, dude, this is it. Like, we're on it. Like, we're going to, we're going to blow up. Like, we got this. Any random idea I could come up with at the time is what we would do as long as we had enough time to film it after class. We started to get some traction. That 5,000 views turned into 6,000 views, into 8,000 views, into 10,000 views. And it grew. It started to really pick up. So we had this momentum. And at that point, I went from focusing on law school to all I could think about was YouTube. Even though it basically made me no money at all. You know, 1320 video is my only income. So I'm doing law school. Obviously, my work was first. I had Kyle made me focus on my work because if my work, you know, got pushed under the rug, then it became a problem, which it did a couple times. But Kyle would be like, hey, you need to, you know, pick it up. And then there was the videos. So it was like my priorities were all over the place. And I remember about a year and a half into law school, Cooper and I were at TX2K, which is in Texas, and we had taken my car all the way there, and we're riding home, and I wasn't going to make it to tax law class, just judging by our trip, so we're like speeding, you know, we're like going way over the speed limit, we end up driving all the way through the night from Texas, we're both exhausted, and it got to a point where we unloaded my C7 about five hours from Tampa, up north, and I sped in my Corvette because the truck and trailer could not go fast enough for me to make it back to class and get my attendance credit without failing the class, you know, because if you miss so many classes, you'll fail. And I had already missed the maximum amount. So I remember I was just hauling the mail and I make it to class and the professor literally put on a video that we watched for almost the whole class. And I was just like, what am I doing? Why, why did I just race through the night all night and then come to a class where I'm literally going to sit here and edit a video? You know, I was like, what am I doing? You know, I'm just frustrated. I don't know what the best route for me is to do. You know, do I drop out of law school? Do I finish another year and a half? Do I chase my dream? And that day after driving through the night and you know the truck and the Corvette barely making it and then just having my time wasted 
I, it was pretty clear to me that I wanted to drop out of school. So that day after class, I called my parents. I said, look, guys, I got to take a leave of absence from school. I want to chase this YouTube channel. I want to make this YouTube channel my, my career. And as you can imagine, it wasn't real easy to explain and kind of get my parents on board. They're super supportive. You know, they're going to they're gonna support me no matter what, but they did want me to finish school originally. And, uh, you know, telling my grandparents that I want to drop out of law school to become a professional redneck named Cletus is it's tough. Like, it's not as simple as it seems, you know? But I had to make that decision to, you know, whether it disappointed some people or not, it was, it was time to make this YouTube channel freaking happen. And so once that decision was made, I met with the Dean and that brings me back to this email that I'm going to read you guys. And I went and I said, look, I want to chase my dream. I want to build my business and I'm at a prime time to do so. I need to leave of absence. And I left that day after the Dean said, yep, you're good to go. We'll put you down for a leave of absence. We'll see you hopefully soon. I left that day and I have never ever looked back. I haven't even gone back to the school a single time since that day. I don't remember the exact day, but it's been two years. Here's my uh, letter I just got from the school. It says, this is to inform you that since we have not heard from you regarding your return from leave of absence, we have administratively withdrawn you from the College of Law effective January 15th, 2020. And Honestly, this piece of mail has been sitting on my desk for <laughs> like two months because we've been so busy. I've just seen it, you know, and I saw the name of the school on it. And I just threw it in a pile because I was so not worried about it. And I opened it up the other day and I'm like, holy crap, I forgot I dropped out of law school, you know, and I can't imagine what route I, you know, life could have taken me had I not devoted my time into the YouTube channel. You know, I love this job. I love this job and I love the people that I get to work with and the people I get to meet. And I just can't imagine had I let it all go to become a lawyer. I'm just so thankful for that timeline of events and how it went. And I met Chase at a stoplight. I met Kyle at a car meet. You know, Kyle wanted an Instagram and it, I, he let me work through school and the people I met in school and, you know, Cooper. And it's all just trailed into this amazing thing. And, you know, now we've got James has been on board for two years. Thank you for uh, letting me live this dream. It's insane. And this letter. The other day when I read it, basically just rewinded me all the way through it. And I was like, holy crap, it's been a freaking journey. And it's so easy to forget about the important things in life. And this just, you know, slipped my mind for two years. So here we are. And the YouTube channel is just my freaking dream, guys. And so for those of you guys asking about 1320 videos still, about a year after I dropped out of law school, I helped Kyle train a new fella to run the social media and I departed from 1320 video. But, you know, I talk to Kyle every day. He has literally texted me while this video is being filmed. You know, he's a really, really good friend of mine. We do work together on, on a lot of different things and he is a wonderful guy. And through this whole process of me, you know, starting our YouTube channel, Kyle was never like, whoa, like, you know, you work for my YouTube channel. You can't just go start your own. It was all like, hey, no, you need to, you should do this in your videos or let me, let me help you make a better thumbnail or a better title. And he pushed me to start my own thing. So a big thank you to Kyle Loftus from 1320 video. Certainly he deserves some credit for this YouTube channel and where it's become. And uh, I'll never forget that uh, support that he gave me through all of this and Chase and Justin from Streetcar Takeover, same to them. They have been amazing along this journey for sure. They they have uh, they taught me a lot about the automotive industry, and they uh, you know taught me things to look out for and the things to follow. And here we are. So then the other thing I wanted to talk about today, two guys on a more personal note, is uh, 
my girlfriend on the channel. As you guys know, uh, my previous girlfriend when I was in college did used to be on the YouTube channel. And that definitely aroused some issues in our relationship just because you can imagine females are under so much scrutiny on social media platforms as it is. So imagine a YouTube channel that's 98% males and about cars and uh, you know the comments and things can be really really hard on girls and that is something that you know I fear for any girl who comes on our YouTube channel because 99% of the people who watch are very very kind but there's also that 1% who are ruthless I have a girlfriend and I have not necessarily hidden my girlfriend, but just avoided having her on the channel for the last year and a half just because I didn't know if I was ready to go down that road. So you guys have heard me talk to her in the live feeds. Her name is Maddie, you know, and I love this girl very much. And I do want to bring her on the channel very soon because I feel as though if I were to just post on Instagram or something one day, that I was gonna get married, that you know, it would just not be right if you guys didn't get to meet her and uh, meet her wonderful personality. And she's an awesome, awesome girl. And I'm really excited to have her in a video. I just don't know how to do that yet and when. And so, you know, I figured I'd ask if you guys have any ideas. Maybe we go for a drive. Maybe we let her rip some cars at the Freedom Factory. I don't know. But she's an amazing person and I am excited to soon bring her on for a video. And I hope that goes well. She's really tough. So I think she can handle the YouTube side of the, you know, YouTube drama side of things. But just seeing, you know, my past experiences and seeing, you know, my other YouTube friends of mine who have their girlfriends on their channels, it can be tough. But I am working on it. I know some of you guys have asked, and that'll all be hopefully happening soon. So other than that, guys, the last thing is just our plan moving forward after the month of freedom. If you guys are still on this video, thanks for freaking sticking through it. I know it's just a lot of talking. Uh, so the month of freedom's over. I'm going to go back to every other day videos. There will definitely be some daily videos throughout this month because we got Rocky Mountain Race Week. You know your boy's going daily for that but there's no way we can hold the pace of daily videos. It's super fun for a one month deal. Maybe we'll do it again. I mean, we'll for sure do it again. I don't know how soon or later, but it's just tough on the, the team and the editing side of things it takes so much time. That's the hardest part for me. And uh, we're just pushing everything. You know, the cars are tore up. We got to space it, get that space back in between videos to repair the cars, to uh, you know, get stuff fixed up at the factory because we can't just be doing live action every freaking day. We're uh, we're gonna recover a little bit at the beginning of this month, and we're gonna come back stronger than ever and have a killer month of June. I'm super excited, and I'm really excited for race week and uh, some things we have going at the Freedom Factory, which you guys will find out about. It's just a uh, freaking. It's been so great the month of freedom. I was really worried about the health of the channel how we might lose some viewership by going daily because people start to lose track of the content. And I think that happened a little bit, but overall, I mean, posting daily and we were getting, we kind of averaged about seven, 800,000 views. That's insane. That is so insane. Like I can't, I can't even believe that the channel is capable of doing that. And uh, we had over 300 million minutes watched on the channel this month and just do the math on that that's like hundreds of years worth of just time spent watching this freaking live action it's unbelievable so thank you guys so much for the month of freedom i you know am excited to not only finish the month of freedom tomorrow but give you guys one last epic piece of content but that is it for now thanks for watching do it for dale we'll freaking see you later